Welcome back, Stasa23 here, back again with some knife therapy. And before we get started with this video, if you like it, please give it a big thumbs up so I know you're enjoying the content. If not, thumbs down also works. And if you like knife content and you're not already, smash that subscribe button for me so you don't miss anything. Uh, today I have for you a very exciting one coming from Three Rivers Manufacturing, or TRM as they call it, the Shadow. Very cool, unique knife. Um, comes in at $279.00. And uh, what you get here with this first run is uh, 3D contoured uh, jet black G10 as they call it. And uh, just a cool overall offering from the TRM. <clears throat> Let's get some uh, specs out of the way real quick. You have an overall length of 7 and 3 quarters inches, so that medium, medium size uh, EDC blade. You have a blade length of 3.2 inches. You have a grip area from the front of this choil to the back of four and a quarter inches. And if you don't go to the choil from here to here, you have a uh, grip area of 3.5 inches. So it's going to fit a lot of pretty much anybody's hand unless you got really fat sausage fingers, so you can't fit it there. Um, the width from here to here on the scales is 1.49 inches. So uh, I'm sorry, that's the thickness. The thickness is 0.48 inches thick, so it's nice and slim in that dimension. Close it up. The width in the pocket from here to here is 1.49 inches. <clears throat> and you have a blade stock thickness, or should I say thinness, of 0 0.09, pretty much the same as a Benchmade bug out, nice and thin stock. And uh, your behind the edge thickness ranges from uh, 25 thousandths to 28 thousandths at around 22 degrees per side. Uh, before I get into my thoughts on the knife, let's break off into the testing. I had a lot of fun doing it. I hope y'all enjoyed as much as I did. All right, we're gonna baton with the TRM Shadow. That axis lock, it should do fine. Start off with a rubber mallet. No play. Still centered. Still smooth. No up and down, no side to side. All right, we're gonna test the sharpness on the shadow. Super sharp. Do some cardboard cutting, single wall cardboard. God, it's in slices so good. Warm blade. Still stupid job. We're gonna go through uh, some thick bungee, some hose, kind of like a double walled hose pipe, except a little bit thicker. And this bad mama gemma with the nylon in the inside. We'll start with the bungee. Very sharp. Push button. Like this. Nice tip. Get away. This might be the edge Just that edge. Nice. 
nice. All right, we're gonna shave some uh, thick bridle leather. We'll use the point first. The way I use, I like to do it. Put it there and just drag the tip. And voila. Oh. Shave some. All right, on to the next. I'm gonna cut some five eighths an inch thick sisal, twisted sisal rope, Cedric and Data style. Pete. I don't know how Pete does this that often. Talk about kill your hands. This is just push cutting through this very nicely. Let's zoom in a little bit. I would say it's still good to go. Got a little hang up right up in this area. Let me see, I'm gonna wipe it off. Might have some gunk on it. Yeah, it's still sharp. All right, now we're gonna do a little bit of uh, wood shaving, carving to test the ergos. I'm gonna try choking up first and see how that feels because it feels like that'd be the most comfortable. And we'll see how this edge is still doing. Still biting in. This little hump I think is getting me, yeah, this little hump right here is getting me a little bit, no, I don't know what it is, but something, but not bad. Let's try to get back. All right, something is giving me a hot spot, pinching me right there. I know that the edge of this clip, whenever I'm torquing like that, this part of the clip and my fat of my finger is going inside of uh, this part too. So this is the, like the first time I've really felt any any like uncomfortable spots when using the knife. Um, I haven't tested many knives that are super comfortable when doing this because you're putting a lot of force down into the cuts. That's the whole point of this, just to kind of see what I might be missing if I were doing harder cuts. So there you go. All right, we're going to try to uh, cut through these, this uh, wire, three copper wires in here. Uh, for the most part, mm, most of the knives do pretty well. Copper's soft. Let's just see how easily it goes through, though. That's another thing. The knife still has a decent edge. It goes through it nicely. Let me see what... Let's see how it looks. Can y'all see that? Let's try... Is that too close? 
right there. All right, we're we'll gonna be using the rubber mallet. got a little bit of rolling right there nothing that is major damage or anything let's see probably won't even tell let's zoom back out probably won't even better really tell no no way whenever you gotta cut some paper let's see if I can get a piece of paper Yep, can't even tell that that's there. And this is a, a thin, a thin high flat grind or thin stock. So doesn't, doesn't surprise me that it, it rolled a little bit, but like I said, you can't even tell there's a dull spot. So that's a win in my book. Uh, it's probably just showing up because the lights are brighter here. See if I even feel it. Nope. A minor, minor spot. There you go. I think I think it did great. All right. The last test we're gonna do is some spine wax. Uh, I know they're trying to test out their axis style lock. I think it's their, they called their river lock. And I will say, out of the box, this thing had absolutely, it has absolutely no play at all. And it's nice and smooth. So it's one advantage over most of my bench mates. So let's see how it does with uh, spine wax. It should do great from the nature of the lock. Let me see, make sure I'm in frame. Start out lightly. I have, um, these are Cavalier gloves, so if it closes on me, I'll be all right. Yeah, that thing ain't closing. Beating up my wood. Alright, there we go. Let's take this off. Let's see. Absolutely no side to side, no up and down, still smooth. Excellent. I think it's going to be a big win for them. They definitely did it right the first time on this bar lock like that. I'm sure they probably heat treated the, the pin and their fitment must be excellent because it is Solid as a rock. All right, there you go. All righty, I hope y'all enjoyed that uh, that cutting footage. And uh, if there's ever anything else y'all would like me to do, y'all just let me know. Um, let's get a close look at this. You have a clip point blade shape with a nice stone wash finish of uh, 20 C CPM 20 CV steel. Um, with a high flat grind as you can see it goes up to about right here <clears throat> you have nice deep deeply etched uh, logos or uh, milled logos in there very very nicely done and on this side you have TRM USA 20 CV and that's also got a nice little deep etch you have dual thumb studs and close it up you have their river lock right here that 
coupled with the river lock and the reversible pocket clip and the dual studs you have a completely ambidextrous knife so that's really really cool to see um <laughs> your pivot is like a polished uh starburst pattern on there that you can actually feel that's pretty cool uh, you have, like I said, 3D contoured G10 that is nice and comfortable in hand. Uh, you do have this forward finger choil that allows you to choke up. And I will say, whenever I was doing my testing, that was very, very comfortable to uh, get right here. And I was able to put a lot of power behind the cuts. You don't have any jipping, but I didn't see the, the need for it. I, I had just enough control where I didn't feel like my finger was going to slide off that flat spine up top. <clears throat> You have one body screw that is holding the uh, this stainless panel that goes to about right here for the uh, river lock. And your screws that are holding on this side are, are all in the back. That's very, very cool. You don't see that much on a uh, G10 knife. So your screws are on this side that probably go into a post i didn't take it apart or anything you have a black g10 backspacer you have a poly polished like domed as you can see t8 pivot that's stainless and uh stainless uh, body screws as well that are t6 you have t6 on the pocket clip and they have been recessed so it's not going to snag on anything whenever you go to try to put it in your pocket um let's see i don't have uh my jeans handy because i'm like i said i started doing in my shop and i still haven't brought everything over but <laughs> deep carry clip goes in, in and out of the pocket very nicely um I, I thoroughly enjoy this clip i'm thinking about picking up a couple of spare ones from them. it is titanium so it pretty much buries into the pocket you just have that little bit sticking out right there uh, your blade to handle ratio is pretty much one to one. You're not going to come in contact in the closed position. And throughout all that testing, it, it remained completely centered. And I will say that this thing, I don't know what they do different than Benchmade, but this thing has absolutely no left side to side, absolutely no up and down through all that stuff that I did with this. That's one thing that I will state right here that. I only do this stuff in the videos just to let you know what your knife could handle. I don't know if it would void your warranty, so if you want to do any of that stuff and you're worried about that, you better contact the manufacturer. I, that's all I can say about that. Because uh, I'm sure uh, most manufacturers, a lot of the stuff I did would be considered abuse. Not saying that they would, but they might. So ask before you do it if you care. <coughs> um, tip up left or right hand carry so like i said it's it's going to be ambidextrous to anybody to want to if they want to use it it has broken in nicely it's gotten smooth i can uh flick it down just like that other company uh, you have these milled lines in the g10 that do offer some grip whenever you're holding it especially back here you can feel it um not it's not harsh or anything but you you do feel it i don't know if they did it for aesthetics or for that purpose <laughs> um it is riding on phosphor bronze washers uh tr 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 let's get some size comparisons and then we're going to wrap it up you got the benchmade 940 i think these two are are really com comparative uh they're about the same exact size this one's a lot wider and you have the spider co sage one maximet i will say that the sage one ergos are amazing this knife right here especially that forward choil gave it a run for its money that's that's what i'll say there um let's see my two other trm knives you got the atom so the atom's a bigger knife as you can see and the small guy the nerd and i got two more uh you got the spider Co paramilitary two it's smaller than the para two and then you got the bench made bug out don't mind all the modification stuff it's still the same length so it's smaller than the bug out. I mean, it's bigger than bug out, smaller than the PM2. 
Uh, let's check the weight out on this knife. Got me a new handy dandy scale. We'll start off in grams because that's what it's going to start with anyway. So 106.7 grams. Ooh, that thing's bright. And let's go to your ounces. 3.76 ounces, so that's definitely a lightweight in my book. Um, so overall, oh, well, I forgot to give you all my nitpicks. Um, and they're really, really minor. <laughs> I'm not a huge fan of the thumb studs. Um, I wasn't. They're the same thumb studs that are on the Atom. Now, you could put this, um, you could put one of these O-rings on it that I that you can get from them or from the hardware store and that'll work but just not my favorite they unless you're grabbing it from the top like that it in my opinion is just not super comfortable um and also i like that the, they did a decorative pivot but that polished look to it um i, I don't know i would have rather i would rather see all everything satin like it's hard to tell but this screw is pretty pretty close to satin finish compared to the shininess of the pivot now that's just very nitpicky um and i did i did notice only when i was cutting down putting a lot of pressure that um that it was actually the fat of my finger going inside of the scales right there that was that was causing a little bit of pain but i was doing a lot of pressure cutting so you know, your normal EDC task, you should not have any issues. And that wasn't bad enough to where I felt I had to put a glove on. So there you go. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them down below. And I will see y'all on the next one. Peace.